Faculty, researchers, and colleagues, assalamu alaikum. I'm Sara Ali, a PhD scholar from University of Waikato, New Zealand. On behalf of the Institute of Business Management and Education Department, I would like to welcome you to today's webinar titled, Mixing the Methods, Trusting the Findings. This webinar is part of a webosium series, Researching and Beyond, covering different aspects of conducting a research study. The series is aimed at assisting not only students at MPhil and PhD level, but also other researchers, NOAIS, PhD fellows, and faculty. Today's webinar session on mixing research methods is the last webinar in the series. Uh, it is, a, it is a fourth and the last webinar in the series. The first session was on how to craft a thesis research topic. The second was on building a theoretical and conceptual framework. And the third was on developing research philosophies. Designing research is not just an area of data collection methods, but a carefully selected systematic applied process. Mixing methods uh, employs a wide range of data collection methods in order to encourage participation and to include a wide spectrum of views. It promotes the systematic fusion of quantitative and qualitative data and opens new horizons and avenues for the researchers. Shedding light on mixed method research, Ms. Rakshanda Jabin will conduct today's webinar. She is a research scholar at the Department of Education Institute of Business Management and is doing her research under the supervision of Dr. Nasreen Hussain. This webosium series has been organized by Dr. Nasreen. This is approximately an hour long webinar. During the session, the audience will be asked to attempt three polls. Each poll will be flashed on the screen and the audience will submit their answers in the chat box within 45 seconds. Questions will be entertained at the end of the webinar. The chat box will be activated in which you will be requested to write down the questions. Without much ado, I will hand over the session to Ms. Rakshanda. Over to you, Rakshanda. Thank you, Sarah. Let me share uh, the screen so that the audience can see and I can take a start. Okay. This is uh, Rakshanda Jabu, and I will present my discourse on mixed method research. This presentation deals with mixed method research, which is a methodology of conducting research that involves collecting, analyzing, and integrating quantitative as well as qualitative research. This approach to research is, is used when this integration provides a better understanding of research problems than either of the e, uh, each alone, that is either of uh, with quantitative or quantitative methods. The description may seem a little bit of basic and straightforward, but there are many aspects to consider. In this presentation, we look at the need, dimensions, elements, and factors affecting this method uh, research, along with various designs and the decisions to be made during the process of conducting mixed method research studies. As you know, the quantitative research plays with numbers. And uh, the quantitative uh, research generates ideas. Now, where quantitative research answers what and who questions by providing a general understanding, the qualitative data provides and describes why and how questions by giving a deeper understanding or developing understanding at a deeper level, at a deeper depth, greater depth. Now, qualitative data may provide a deep examination of a phenomenon um, of interest, but only with, the, uh, with respect to the handful of participants. Whereas um, the quantitative data can provide information across a broad uh, sampling of participants, but the depth of that information is certainly limited. I think this uh, will best explain and illustrate uh, the, this cartoon picture, where uh, the, quanti the quantitative and the qualitative method, they are focusing on different perspectives. The quantitative method is focusing on the proportion of the free ice cream number, whereas uh, in the qualitative, the, um, the participant, uh, the researcher is seeing and viewing the emotions and feeling of the ice cream or the, on getting free ice cream. So uh, depending on the goals of a research study, as well as uh, its guiding research question, 
uh, one type of data alone may not tell a complete picture or adequately answers all the research questions. Now, before going to the next type of research, it is important to understand when and how mixed methods emerge or began. The need exists because one data source may be insufficient. Due to uh, the paradigm war between the uh, quantitative and qualitative researchers in the mid to late 1980s, uh, when they've been working on the similar ideas of combining quantitative and qualitative research methods. Uh, but on, and on this point of time, they did not see the legitimacy of to the other approach of conducting research. However, they realized on a deeper level the value of an alternative approach. There emerged the mixed method research as a widely used mode of inquiry. And over the past decade or more, interest in the use of this uh, mixed method research as a means for studying educational topics and phenomenon has grown substantially. My presentation is uh, comprised of three objectives. But before I proceed to the objective and the native part of my study, let's have a look and let's check the prior knowledge of uh, the audience about mixed method, method, uh, mixed method research. Okay, so Faiza, can we have for one question? The uh, result indicated that most of my audience, they're well aware that triangulation is not the only method the only, not the only reason for conducting mixed method research. So coming up to the first objective, to explore the usefulness of mixed methods. We need to understand that why mixed methods, why there is a requirement, why there is a necessity of conducting mixed method research. The first one and the foremost is triangulation. It is seeking convergence, the corroboration of results from different methods studying the same phenomenon. When you're studying the same phenomenon, you want to cross validate your findings, then there is a requirement, there is a need to go for triangulation, to go for the other method, conduct research, conduct, uh, collect that uh, data, uh, analyze it, and then corroborate it or to see uh, conference, conference in the back. Then comes development. Using the result from one method to help develop or inform the other method. It actually helps to develop a deeper understanding towards the same thing. So this is also another reason for conducting this research. Initiation. This is also very important. What is initiation? See, it discovers the paradoxes and the contradictions that lead to reframing uh, of the research question or maybe redirecting the path of the study because uh, at times it happens that one data that you've been collecting and uh, you've analyzed it, that uh, the next uh, that uh, you know uh, compels the researcher to uh, redirect its path or reframe the research question because of the uh, you know uh, difference in the data that has been found. Expansion. Seeking to expand, as I said, let's see mixed method, it uh, provides the uh, range of the mode of inquiry is broader and it gives a better uh, understanding and at a deeper level and uh, with a great depth. So it, it helps to expand your research. Then comes last but not the least, that is complementarity. Seeking elaboration, enhancement, maybe you know, you need to illustrate or to clarify uh, the results from one method with the result of the other method, then you need to uh, conduct this method research. This is what complementarity tells us. Okay, I am sure and I uh, hope that uh, my audience have developed a little bit of understanding of that. We'll be further elaborating on that when we go into a major part of the study. Now, coming up to the dimensions. As I said in the beginning, that we'll be looking at the dimension as well of the mixed method research. So, the first one is the studies. Do the quantitative and qualitative components have different status, or anyone is dominant over the other? 
I mean, the study is leading the major portion is uh, addressing the qualitative part, and a part of it or a chunk of it is being addressed by the quantitative. And the reason that we for maybe there is no need to write it. Then comes timings. Then what is the timing of conducting these two phases or two methods? Or you know, uh, either the first is quantitative and it's uh, being and the data is analyzed, you can collect it, analyze, and then interpret it, and then you're looking towards the uh, second phase or maybe. I know it's going on simultaneously at the same time, you know, the things are being done on both dimensions. Stage of location, that is also very important. Does the mixing, you know, the integration occur um, at the time when you are determining the research question or collecting the data, analyzing, interpreting the data? What is the integration of that? It's stage at which this is to be done. Now, fourth one is the approach to mixing. Are the data merged? They are embedded or they are connected. These are all four dimensions that help the researcher to uh, choose or to select the research design or uh, the mixed kind of research. Now, what are the elements that help the researcher to choose uh, mixed kind of research? Purpose and elements. Why is this research necessary? What is the knowledge that needs to be driven by conducting this research? Is there a primary purpose to describe, explore, understand, examine, evaluate, or you know, test the phenomenon of interest? Or there will be multiple purposes for uh, conducting this study. Theoretical orientation. This is also very important with respect to the uh, researcher's own philosophical beliefs and the theories that you are working on. That is that uh, the, the, the study to be conducted and analyzed with an example theory. It's geographic, denominatical, or it's just reinforced for the status quantitative uh, paradigm, quantitative paradigm, or it is going to be that leads to the qualitative paradigm that is constructed uh, for others. Then comes research questions. Sorry, something track. That what sampling is being used while we are conducting the research, whether it's composite, it's uh, random, it's uh, you know, a combination of random or non random strategies. What is the strategy? What is the method that you're applying? What is the approach? What is the direction that you're using to, uh, to, uh, to, for sampling strategy? Then comes research questions. Does the research question deploy a conjunction uh, with a different group, or the research question deploy magnitude, or you know, they are going to find out the frequency or the degree of something, or the research question are addressing description, contextualization, and understanding from a particular perspective, or maybe a combination of all of the above. Methods of investigation. What is the instrumentation? What tools are being utilized and used in that? Whether it's um, a questionnaire, an interview guide that has a structured interview or structured questions or uh, semi structured questions, or is it uh, simply a uh, you know, survey questionnaire, closed ended survey? Then comes method of analysis. The qualitative or quantitative method of analysis be employed uh, separately to answer each question or, you know, they are embedded in each other, or they are uh, going to be taking one after the other. After having discussed the research design elements, we are moving forward to the factors which influence uh, mixed method research. First of all, is the theoretical perspective. As I said, that theoretical perspective actually it you know leads it guides your study because the researcher has some philosophical beliefs. Uh, the researcher has some theoretical perspective in mind, and maybe you know the study is based on a very clear cut theory that is uh, quite visible, and it is leading your study. Or maybe they are explicit. Maybe they are hidden. You are using multiple theories, and you know a part of that theory is 
guiding your study or maybe your uh, study is being guided by more than one theory and uh, the complete theory is not guiding the complete study. Then comes the priority of strategy. That what are the priorities? Is the data gathering, analysis, and everything going to be uh, equal at the time? Is the quantitative and qualitative data you will be taking correctly the same, or they will change in dominance as we spoke earlier also? Now, sequence of data collection and implementation. What is the sequence? Qualitative, you're going to go for the qualitative first, or the gathering of data analysis will be for quantitative, and there you'll be coming uh, to the second phase, that is the uh, other method. Or there is no sequence. Now the point at which the data are integrated, because this is the main reason that why this next method is uh, being employed or deployed while conducting your study. Uh, what are the points at data collection? Maybe you know the quantitative and qualitative data you are collecting, and the data is being integrated. Maybe at the time of analysis, when you are analyzing through quantitative and qualitative lens, you are analyzing and you are Integrating it, or maybe at the time of interpretation when you are drawing conclusion, or maybe with some combination of both. Okay, now we are moving to the objective two, which in which we discuss the different types of uh, research design of the experience. Okay, so According to the press well planning pattern, there are six basic designs, and uh, three of them are sequential, and three of them are quantitative. It's sequential explanatory strategy, exploratory strategy, or transformative, and in concurrent or convergent, triangulation strategy, nested strategy, and transformative strategy. Moving on to the first research design, that is uh, sequential explanatory strategy. Okay. In this, the quantitative data is collected, is gathered, analyzed first, then it leads to the collection and analysis of qualitative data. So, in that, what we are doing? Quantitative data, maybe a survey questionnaire is being introduced earlier, it's collected, and then the interviews are being conducted from the participants. Then at the time of interpretation, these both the data, they are both the database, they are uh, embedded, they are connected, they are merged, and then the interpretation is strong. Now look at the example of it. I think this will better explain uh, this design or the approach or the because the research design and the uh, uh, research uh, method. This actually leads and it tells you that how you're going to come up with the conclusion and how it's going to be conducted. Now, look at the uh, example of this uh, study of uh, where the school leaders' role on students' mathematical achievement is being seen under one complexity program. Now, what the researcher has done that the collection analysis of quantitative data from uh, it's a quantitative survey data from 158 students being collected, analyzed, and then this qualified the collection of uh, an analysis of qualitative data. That is, the focus group interviews were conducted through, um, by, from the uh, six uh, leaders of the three schools. And then the data is integrated during the report. But the primary focus was on the quantitative results. As you can see, the survey questionnaire was uh, gathered earlier than the uh, conducting interviews. There are certain advantages and limitations, as we discussed, that every design, every method has. So, uh, with respect to exploratory strategy, it is very straightforward. This is the strength of uh, the exploratory design, that it's very straightforward, it's very clear to report. There are two distinct stages you're and collecting data from quantitative and then analyzing. Then you're going towards the quantitative phase. So, there are distinct stages. It is easier to describe. Very easy because you can uh, interpret it in your conclusion. But the weakness is time consumption. It takes a lot of time because unless one phase is completed, you cannot move to the second phase. And no one can say that you know how much time it's going to take. So this is one of the reasons. Okay. 
then comes the sequential exploratory strategy. It's just vice versa. It's opposite to uh, explanatory, where the qualitative data uh, collection and analysis is done before the quantitative data collection and analysis. In case of uh, explanatory, we collected and analyzed quantitative data earlier, but here in exploratory, what we are doing? Interviews where we conducted earlier, and then you know it leads to the uh, survey question, right? and then the interpretation uh, takes place. Look, look at the example. I think I will uh, better explain you that uh, how this study is useful and how it is being conducted. Uh, they were studying was conducted by Elizabeth in 2017 to understand researchers' data management practices. There were some practices which were going on at the uh, University of Cornwall. And the, uh, the researcher wanted to understand the researcher's practices. So what the researcher has done, you know, the collection and analysis of qualitative data is followed by a collection and analysis of quantitative data. The interviews were taken to just the management behaviors and the challenges that faculty was facing were uh, gathered earlier. Then the uh, qualitative data, quantitative data was uh, collected. That was through a survey. And with the final phase of integration or linking of data come two separate strands of data, come with two different components. So the primary purpose was to explore, was to find out the behaviors and the challenges that you need to be facing from the uh, research point of view. Testing element of a theory, generalizing qualitative findings to different uh, samples and development of instrument. They, this is a use for the development of implementation of this kind of uh, strategy. With respect to the strengths and weaknesses, again, it's just like the sequential explanatory, it's relatively straightforward, it's clear, there are interesting stages, it's to describe or to report, but it is time consuming. It consumes a lot of time. Because if you are uh, it even consumes uh, more time than the quantitative uh, the sequential explanatory, because where the you know, even uh, the quantitative data collection analysis takes less lesser time as compared to qualitative, because there you have to conduct interviews, you have to uh, you know do the thematic analysis, but that takes a longer time. Then comes the third research design of our strategy of uh, transformative. I am interchangeably using these terms strategy and design because it's one and the same thing. So uh, it's sequential transformative strategy. Now, what is happening in sequential transformative uh, strategy is that some qualitative or quantitative data are being collected, analyzed, interpretation is there. But the only difference is actually the proponents of the critical theory. You know, they view the world through a family's lens and it is dependent on their own vision. You know, if they, they want to voice the concern on behalf of others, they, for example, they are uh, looking for the you know, social justice or, you know, they want to raise their voice on the social issues. So they want to conduct a research. So the transformative strategy would, be, would best answer their uh, you know, questions and it would be helpful. Now, look at the uh, example of it. The distinct data collection cases are the type can be collected Either uh, quantitative can be collected first or uh, quantitative can be collected uh, in the beginning. Assessing school climate using a sequential task related design. Now, the school climate factors of parental environment, what are those factors? They said it's parental environment, school safety, building facilities. There were studies from uh, you know, different uh, reporting schools. And uh, the sequential portion of the research design completes it with the first and then quantitative organization climate survey and then. It would be the ethnography, which is a qualitative uh, approach. The result from the two methodologies uncovered the most similarity, the differences, and you know, it helped them to improve the climate of the school, particular school. So, the theoretical perspectives, such as advocacy and specific, uh, the researcher wanted to find out that how to improve, maybe, you know, in looking at the uh, climate of the school, which uh, is uh, uh, or maybe he's, get, he's got some uh, information the, you know, uh, that uh, the, it needs to be improved. So uh, to voice the concerns of the other um, and to just address those issues, he's adopted the uh, transformative strategy. And this is how it's come up to the conclusion. So the primary, uh, primary focus was to employ the method that the best of the perspective. It's not that you see the research question, but here the own a researcher's own theoretical perspective or the claim or the philosophical beliefs. Then you move to the 
um, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, again, it's very straightforward in terms of implementation and reporting, but it has weaknesses. Along uh, with being a time consuming, there's a lot of lack of literature. Like when I was uh, looking for the examples, and there were hardly any examples I could find which could uh, you know, help me uh, draw this conclusion that this is a transformative strategy or the transformative strategy is using this um, strategy. So, uh, because it needs a lot of expertise. So, this is the reason partly that uh, quite many uh, social science researchers they do not use this approach of this strategy. Then comes the concurrent triangulation. Now we are moving to the second phase that is convergent uh, research designs or uh, triangulation concurrent. That is from the first one is concurrent triangulation strategy, where the qualitative and quantitative data collection and analysis are being done simultaneously at the same time. Like quantitative data and the qualitative data, the collection, the analysis, they are being done simultaneously. And then the result is. The results are compared and the interpretation they are integrated. And look at the example of triangulation. Because it's concurrent, so uh, there is no priority of each of the uh, strategy to be adopted or each of the uh, method will come first. It can be uh, quantitative, qualitative, because they are being done at the same time. So uh, the adoption of Kotlin's uh, uh, Android language. The adoption of Kotlin on Android development, a triangulation study was uh, conducted and uh, it was reported in the international conference as well. Uh, the perception of developers about the advantages and disadvantages related to its using. There is a language, and they wanted to find out the perception that how, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, and the most common problem phase analysis. So there were 9,205 questions related to Kotlin development for the Android platform they were gathered. And uh, then they were analyzed. Uh, the, uh, the, um, it was going on simultaneously. The data was gathered, the, the interviews were being conducted, and they were analyzed. And then at the end, it was uh, reported. And the interpretation was done at the time of and framework studies quantitative. So, what are the strengths of uh, triangulation? Familiar to many researchers. I just found out this is the moment I put the word triangulation. I think most of us are very familiar and we're using it's very familiar to that is being used by many of the researchers. Shorter data collection time. Why this you see both the data collection, both the pieces are being done simultaneously at the same time. So it uh, takes lesser time than as the like, sequential data. And it also offset weaknesses inherently by one design the You can see it's fast at the now it you know it uh, Offset the weaknesses, which you can say that they are the, uh, from one method, you can, uh, you want to uh, move that. So it does that. And weaknesses are, requires a great deal of expertise. Because you see, you need to be expert on that. On this example, you are very, um, you have a command, you report the method, and the time duration is not yet correct. It's difficult to compare. Because you see, at times it happens that you know, the discrepancies are there. So to resolve those discrepancies from the findings of uh, both the databases, Sometimes it becomes very difficult to resolve, so uh, it means it's problems. But still, you see, um, the researchers wish to use this methodology. Then comes the second design of function uh, that is function nested strategy. Now you see here, qualitative, and you can see, uh, you know, embedded in it, for qualitative. And then qualitative is at a larger, uh, at a broader view, and then quantitative is just everything at a jungle. And then the analysis of findings are done. What happens that they are, uh, you know, when you frame research questions, so there are some questions which are actually uh, you know, guiding the study to become quantitative, or you know, you can develop a hypothesis and you look at that. While when you are, uh, um, there are certain questions which you think that you know, they cannot be addressed through purely quantitative, then you need to have some of the you know, other method or other approach to talk or to apply that is. Maybe quantitative, maybe quantitative. So this is why we said that it has uh, you know, the, the broader spectrum or the broader platform for the research for the mode of inquiry. It may be either quantitative or quantitative, but just a chunk of it can be addressed to having uh, the other approaches or the alternative methods. And look at the um, example. Here, the study by Albert in 2007. 
it was uh, to find out what would be impact of organization practices of public high school on the academic and social success of the uh, California nine group students and online serving students was used to collect data because it was developed by the students so they knew that the engineering of online survey and then study photos to uh, it was photos on the 285 comprehensive public school with a large sample because we all know that when we are talking about quantitative data so we need to have a broader sample we need to have um, a huge sample then school vector data and standardized testing data were collected to the practices that they were following now what are the, the practices that are there that are documented in their policy books so that were uh, analyzed for qualitative uh, finding or thematic analysis data which during the analysis phase the perspective may or may not guide the student. This kind of study may take a big possibility that we may be just looking for uh, um, an issue which you think that uh, you don't find exactly in the age or with a particular pain or the particular theory is guiding or leading your uh, study. So the primary purpose is to gain for gaining a broader perspective. Then predominant data collected by because it is nested, so as the word indicates that you know, one of the vendor or one of the database is embedded in the other of the nested. It's a lesser uh, content as the uh, quantity as compared to the quantitative or the any. Secondly, purpose is use of embedded data to address different search questions. As I said in the beginning, that if uh, you find that your study has the uh, research question and uh, or maybe one of the research questions will not be addressed to one of the best, but then you go for the content or maybe you go to the next strategy. Now, what are the strengths? It can collect both quantitative and quantitative data from uh, different perspectives, provides advantages of both the methods because when we are using both methods, then of course we can utilize and we can take the charge of both advantages that are there. What is the weakness? Data need to be transformed to allow integration within the fields. Now, there is a, um, again, in the nested approach as well, before you move to the uh, broad conclusion or you infer the result, there has to be expertise required, which actually draw the uh, data transformation. So, uh, result may be biased, which you see, um, maybe the researcher has its own uh, viewpoint or its own uh, uh, perspective that is working to it. So it may lead to, and since the a part of it is being addressed through another approach, so it may be biased in the results which are not as uh, interpreted or clearly shown in the results as they are supposed to. So this is uh, the, these are the differences. Now comes the confident transformative strategy. From the transformative, as I told you earlier, it is uh, the proponent of the particular theory, they use this approach and it is uh, you know, they are seeing the world in the Congress plan and they are focusing on different social issues. So uh, the basic guide is the uh, or the one they, they will drill or you know the drive behind the this, uh, conducting this research is the uh, researcher's own perspective to see the world, to view the world, and voicing the concerns of the uh, so it can be quantitative plus qualitative, it can be quantitative qualitative both, it can be okay. So uh, I tried to be a little more louder. I've just got that you know some of the audience are finding it difficult to uh, hear, although the you know the the sound is uh, full, but I'll try to be more louder so that uh, you are able to understand and you know, the uh, purpose of attending the webinar is achieved. Okay. Look at the example. There are two concurrent data collection cases. When we are saying concurrent, it means that they are converging. They are being collected simultaneously. And then uh, data integrated during analysis of possibly during the integration phase. Now, the uh, this study has been conducted by Cortos in 2011, and it wants to find out the potential of, of, of automated writing and you know, evaluation. So, what the researcher did. The quantitative data consisted of responses to a wicked scale was uh, collected, and uh, you know the, uh, the first and final graphs from the previous scores were also being, uh, being being collected, and the pre and post test scores were taken, and then the quantitative data was the students' first and final graph as well as their transcript. They were collected. They were recorded. The observations were recorded. The, the semi-structured interviews were conducted, and then the data was interpreted. It, 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 
transform the one kind of uh, one data to uh, help and inform the other uh, phase of the study. So this there uh, there involves a transformation. Like the sequential model, the purpose is to allow the researcher to deploy a method that will best serve the theoretical perspective. So what are the strengths and uh, the limitations? The strengths can collect both quantitative and qualitative data simultaneously. As I said, that you know, in con con confident and convergent design, what we do, we are collecting uh, data simultaneously at the same time, so shorter time is being utilized. And then it is again familiar to many researchers and uh, it takes lesser time. What is the weakness? Data need to be transformed to law and regression. And uh, again, that uh, you, a researcher has to address the discrepancies for which a great deal of experience is required. Okay. Uh, now, before uh, you know, moving um, to third objective, let's see that you know what uh, we think about it uh, and uh, how is the uh, perception developed so far about this research design. So, uh, can we go to can we move to Pfizer uh, for uh, the next poll question? Sure, I'll put up the next poll. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. The audience, you see, the 48% of the audience is said that uh, it's what it's uh, attributed to. And 7% uh, emerged and it's been given for 1980. So the answer is correct. It's absolutely correct. And uh, thank you very much, audience, for understanding the uh, despite the case study, it was uh, over the four question, it was actually explained. Coming up to the objective two, this is to initiate the process applied to research. This is in the beginning, I told you that uh, it helps us uh, you know, make decisions. It helps us to make decisions that uh, which method, which uh, strategy to apply, apply, and which method to use for going further. As far as the process is concerned, so if uh, a researcher requires to further explore or explore the phenomenon and the study, which is the, the topic of the study, and if there is some expansion is required, then confirm next step. Because if one method embedding it, as I said, that you see at the time of uh, your determining the research question, and uh, we find out that which of the questions which are addressing which of the methods, so there is going to be quantitative. So if there are uh, two questions, research questions that are uh, your, you can find out to uh, define uh, quantitative or quantitative, then you need that test approach. Or maybe it is sequential design, where the data collection is sequence. Again, the like data collection is sequential, and it depends on the objectives and the research question again. Like whether it should be exponential, where you will collect quantitative data first and analyze it, and then you're going to go to the second phase, or vice versa. If it is to triangulate your findings, then you'll be going for concurrent triangulation. Absolutely right. If a researcher has to work with one vector, but transforming one data from form to another, then the best method or best strategy to use is sequential or concrete transformation. So this well explains, you see, the strategies that are being used and when to do what, when you require to explain or explore, you look for the um, sequential or concrete design, but they should be demonstrated or be able to um, explain with your explanatory, your time to triangulate your findings, then you're going for the concrete triangulation method. Or if at all, you have to transform your data and you have to um, you know, find the conclusion with one method, then the transformative design and strategy is the best to choose. Okay. Um, although, I mean, it's uh, very quick, but I want uh, Sarah or Paisa to please go to poll three so that, you know, uh, I can find out that uh, now after it's understanding this or after having discussed the process, what perception, what understanding have been uh, there is has been developed. So all right, I'll take a poll three. So uh, 
uh, sequential exploratory or constant transformative uh, is the answer where uh, it's uh, the audience has moved it mixed up with that. You see, uh, it's good to have your, your answer at this moment so that before I close and before I conclude, I can uh, explain you a little bit, I can uh, summarize it and tell you that you, uh, when you're talking about the triangulation, so it means that you know, we have passed everything in the concept and we want to know more about that and we have to actually uh, get the stronger uh, conclusion we have to get. So when we are moving towards the triangulation, it's that. And if you are going to uh, you know, transform the web and you really want to go for, as I said in the beginning, that you, know, you have to do a point to consult with the others and you have to come up to one single method, but you will be just transforming. Then you use the transformation. Otherwise, if you just have to translate, you have to go for the, you know, just to find out the, the stronger or the strength of the uh, conclusion, then you can go for either sequential or uh, you know, the content. But uh, this helps you more uh, understand it better. Um, okay. Now, the take home key notes being the researcher, of course, that's very, very important. When you are reporting mixed method study, the writing must communicate the intent of the study. What is the content? What you are actually going to do? What is the, you are, that you are examining the uh, phenomenon? Or you are going for you know, any other, if you are going to study something like that. So it helps to go report like that, that you know, the methodology or the method study examined. So and so, so, and so Specify which design was used. You see, pension exploratory study, and then you have to give the rationale for that, or maybe you know, explanatory design has been used, and you have to explain why is it so. Describe how both better frame forms were employed, whether uh, through I mean, structured interviews, structured interviews, or you know, you have got a checklist of observation, or maybe for the close ended survey. Questionnaires or the instrumentation, instrumentation that you use. It provide the rationale. That is very important. For why both quantitative qualitative data sets are collected. The qualitative study did address the research questions once. And this is why we thought or the researcher can try and this, this study was important. And then come to quantitative or you know, in that. So uh, with this, um, uh, I end up my presentation. And I'll be going to Sarah for a question answer session. Sarah, over to you. What an informative presentation, Rakshanda. Thank you so much. I see a lot of questions in the chat box. I will just get on to it quickly. So the first question is, what is the difference between triangulation and complementarity? Okay, very smart question. You see? Um, you know, if you just look at that and if you just uh, look at the word and the, you know, the word complementarity or triangulation, so it, it may come to your mind that you know, there is one, but there is actually a difference. Triangulation, then, as I said in the beginning, that triangulation is actually the collaboration or uh, you are the convergence that you are mixing and you are cross validating your findings, which have been drawn, the conclusion, the analysis which have been drawn by both developers. Whereas when you're talking about the complementarity, then actually you see there has to be, if you need to complete your study and you think that you know if you need more clarification and it has to be less related or you see it requires enhancement, then you use complementarity because you see it completes your study. You're moving from one piece of uh, data collection to the other. This is mostly done in a sequential. The complementarity is actually, you know, the uh, approach that is utilized and used by the researcher during when they are doing the uh, sequential design. Moving from one place to other, you know, it helps develop and inform the researcher about the other method. So this is the difference between translation and translation. Okay. The second question is, how is each dimension linked to each other in mixed method research? Okay. Uh, we have talked about three dimension, that four, four dimension, that status is there, time and stage of location, and then of course the next thing. The link is, you know, it, it's very well linked with each other. Because and then, unless and until you know that you see that you are either you are giving a priority to any of the method or it is easily done, you cannot have you know, your data collection, not proceed to data collection in answer. Because if it is confident, then you have to decide that you know, is, it has to be done simultaneously. And if you're moving uh, you know, towards the sequential, 
then of course you be and you should know that whether the quantitative data has to be gathered or analyzed earlier than the quantitative or vice versa. Then comes the uh, stage of location that you know what is the priority to be, which stage the mixing is going to be done. And then the approach to mixing, which approach are you planning? Is it you know you are transforming it or it's you know it is it the day, it's the next day, uh, data that you've got in to interpret. So these are all very well linked and very uh, you know they're gelled to each other. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, question number three, uh, does the research question determine the methodology of a study? Okay, not most of the time, but maybe not, uh, it's not important that every time you do a research question like that you are uh, and designing and reading your uh, selection of as I said, you see, if you just recall me while I was teaching in transformation, you can have seen that in transformation, the researchers own the beliefs, the credible perspective, you know, own the mind. So that also leads to the you know, synergy design. Okay. This is how it's not necessarily that you know, every time the research questions are directing and guiding you. Okay. Question number four. Um, and I will I will only take two four, two more questions because then we will run out of time. So um, question number four is: At what point are data integrated in sequential or concurrent designs? Okay, um, I suppose the, the one who asked this question maybe missed out that slide which I mean I was presenting that uh, see the time of data integration is it's it's different in uh, in uh, sequential and uh, concurrent. It is the first in sequential. The first phase has to be completed where you know the data is analyzed and you know, it's, uh, it's it's collected and analyzed, and then you move to the second phase. That is collected, analyzed, into methods or through statistical analysis, and then you know, it has to be completed. Whereas when you're talking about the uh, the time question, so you need simultaneous. You don't need simultaneously. Then at the end of it, whatever you know the uh, analysis is done, then you actually when you're reporting it. Then you are going to interpret and going to integrate. So this is the point of view. This is the, uh, the way of the part of when you are going to integrate the data. Okay. Question number five. Um, what are the factors that lead the research towards choosing transformative strategies? Okay. Um, I just said. And last slide is that you know, I need to know. Okay, so it's the researcher's own perspective, its own paradigm, the philosophy that a researcher has. This is just the uh, researcher's own ideology, the vision, and the advocacy. That guides uh, is it, uh, that uh, helps to decide that you're going for the transformation strategy or you're going for the transformation. So this is researchers' own theoretical perspective or own philosophy belief. Right. Okay, th uh, the final question that we'll be entertained today is uh, given the six kind of mixed method designs. Which ones are the mo are mostly used by social science researchers? Okay, my, um, as far as you see, the, uh, the answer of this is the scheme given by Preston himself. He said, you see, the sequential and the triangulation. He said that you know, the sequential and sequential design, the conversion where the triangulation is going done, that are mostly and widely used by the social science researchers. Because you see, you need to find out the perspective, the perception. And you need to find out about you know, uh, maybe you're exploring a phenomenon or maybe you're going for the ethnography, as in one of the examples I also told you. So these are the three sequential, whether it's explanatory or exploratory, or uh, you know, the time -age. These are the three common methods that are mostly and widely used by uh, social science researchers. Okay, perfect. I still see some questions in the chat box, and I know Rakshanda will be more than happy to answer those questions. Just leave her an email at the email address that she will just share. The, uh, share the, okay, perfect. Uh, 
Thank you, Rikshanda. Any concluding notes? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just take the opportunity to thank IOBM for providing the platform for exhibiting my potential and you know, developing my audience understanding about this type of research. I extend my gratitude to my supervisor, Dr. Rishnu Sand, being the driving force behind you know conducting this webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nasreen. It was a lovely, you know, uh, throughout my presentation and preparation, she was on and she's been helping me out, supporting me. I would like to thank my dear colleagues, my um, other PhD scholars, Narjus, Sajidullah, and Nancy for providing their valuable input, you see, while preparation of my presentation. So thank you so much. And I would also like to thank Sarah for being a wonderful moderator. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. It's been and an honor. of course, honor. my audience who's been there and who's been uh, you know, bearing with me and listening to the complete presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rikshanda, for a thought-provoking and stimulating presentation on the importance of mixed matter research. I am sure this presentation has been useful to all of us. Uh, I will also like to thank uh, Institute of Business Management and the Department of Education for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this innovative and vibrant team. I also want to acknowledge the opportunity that this series has given to the research scholars. And I would also urge supervisors all over Pakistan to give such opportunities to their scholars. And now I will request Dr. Nasreen Hussain to conclude the Webosian series. Uh, good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. I would like to extend my gratitude for bearing with us throughout the journey of the Webosian series. I consider my team as leaders as they showed an extremely strong commitment and enthusiasm about the work during the past five months. The scholars were responsible, they were fair-minded, uh, they were positive, and they were caring. So they cared for each, each other. It was an uphill task with regular academic work going on, but we eventually made it. And I think that's what counts. Uh, thank you, audience, for bearing with us. Uh, without you, the webinar wouldn't have taken off. And I would like to uh, thank my team as well for trusting me and making the four events a success. Thank you, IOBM Senior Administration, for the support. Um, and of course, Sarah and Ati and uh, Adiba, who have been our uh, uh, moderators. And these moderators, they are all doing the PhD from different international universities. So this was a good taste of what actually life is when they come back to Pakistan. Uh, the recording of the webinars will be uploaded on IOBM YouTube after a week from today. Uh, please stay tuned and do uh, download the YouTube if you are interested in it. Uh, till then, Allah Hafiz and enjoy the weekend.